Hello my spooky people. This week I wanted to do something a little bit self-indulgent. I've been craving a big embroidery project. An idea that came to mind when I was thinking about a new embroidery project would actually be something to match my wonderful fan laced corset that I made. If you haven't checked it out I highly recommend watching those two videos where I made this corset. But for this week I would like to make a neck corset with a lot of embroidery and just something to be a little self-indulgent. I don't think I'm ever going to wear it a lot. It's definitely gonna be like a once in a rare blue moon uh, accessory, but I just really want to make something kind of crazy and a little bit over the top because I am perpetually the overdressed girlfriend. And I just want to add a neck corset uh, to my collection of strange things that I wear out in public. So let's go start drafting my new neck corset. So I doodled some concepts about this because I really wasn't sure what I wanted the shape language to be and how I wanted the embroidery to look. So here are the options that I came up with. This was the first concept I came up with that more closely matched the fan lace corset and I don't know, it's not quite right I think. The shapes are just off to me. This one was fun to draw but honestly I had no clue how I was going to do those peaks and they kind of scared me. This one also just felt too pointy to me. And so I decided to go with this one. I think the top and bottom edges have some nice shapes and I think the full coverage of the embroidery would look nice. Also, this is going to be boned and lace, not for shape, but for support and structure. So which one would you have chosen? Let me know in the comments. This project started, like most of my other corsets, with a tape pattern on my dress form. A quick measurement check told me that my dress form is about an inch bigger around than my neck, as well as it's not really tall enough to do a full pattern off of. So this is a little strange to do, but I needed a base to go off of, so this was my struggle for a while. Once I had drawn approximate lines onto the tape, I'll then cut it out and transfer to some wrapping paper, add some seam allowance, and then try to make a mock-up from that and some bed sheets. I'll cut it out and sew up all of those seams, then press it flat and sew boning channels into the seam allowance. I'll use zip ties for bones for my mock-up since it's cheap and I don't really want to waste my real boning on mock-ups. I ended up doing this a few times and after a while I just kind of gave up on recording it so I could just get it done, so... I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about the mock-ups and what happened with those right now. This is the first mock-up that I finished. And also the sharpest, it is both small and huge at the same time. I don't know what happened. So it's big, it's also small. I decided with this one that there is no way I can adjust this pattern to make it actually work right and the way I want it to. So I scrapped this one and tried again with another tape pattern. With mock-up number two, I definitely over adjusted way too much. So I started off with another pattern we're gonna call this mock-up number 0.5 because I didn't even bother boning or pressing this one because it is so small that it wouldn't there it doesn't even go halfway around my neck. So for this one I knew I over adjusted the seam allowance too much so I decided instead of doing the 5 8 seam allowance which I did for this version I went ahead and only did a half inch seam allowance for the next version just to see if adjusting each panel that little bit could save this one and so I have mock-up officially number two Eh, I have issues with. It is huge and small, just like it was with the other. So it is digging into my jaw up here a little bit too much and it's making that's kind of uncomfortable. I do like the length, I like the silhouette it's giving me here, but like I said, it's digging in uncomfortably. I know if these were some real bones, those would be really uncomfortable as opposed to just kind of. But also, this gap is weird. It's not even, it's not going straight. It's just all over the place. I also took a look at the number of panels and the distance between the panels. Like up here, that's really not a whole lot for me to put embroidery between. So I decided with this one too, also just go ahead and scrap the tape pattern and start again on a third tape pattern on my mannequin. Lessons learned from that last one is I don't want that many panels. I ended up removing a panel from the front and the back and I did a new tape pattern, which brings me to mock-up number three. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with this one. It's huge. Don't get me wrong, it's huge. I like where this is hitting though, a lot better. It's not digging into my jaw right here, so that's a lot more comfortable. I like the 
sweep down there and in the back it is huge this is another pattern that i could probably remove a whole panel and probably get the right size but because the shoulders and everything were sloped the way they were i can't really do that to make the fit right so i did go ahead and decide to just adjust this pattern and try and make this one work instead of a fourth tape pattern so with some adjustments to the next one i decided i also wanted to check out the lacing so what i did for that is i just did that and there's bones on the inside of the lace and I just shoved it through with my sewing awl. So this is mock-up number four. This is the adjusted version of the third tape pattern. Honestly, I think we're onto something here. It's huge, it's still big and also small. It is small up at the very top of the neck and really big at the very bottom. This will actually overlap by quite a bit, so this bottom swoop is too big. The top is not quite big enough. Because I am lacing this, I do expect a small gap. I kind of like the amount of gap right there, but I do think it's too much. It's going down to a V, so I need to make this go down straight instead. For this one, I know I need to just adjust the front panel number one and a little bit of the panel number four on the back just to help with the sweep. Which brings me to my final mock-up number five. Uh, this one I'm not bothering with the lacing in the back so it's just sewed back there. Um, I can try and figure out the gap from the front. I am real happy with this one. It touches down here. I'm still kind of doing that V a little bit but I do believe it's because of my neck doesn't try and just go straight down. Um, I do have a little bit of a gap right there and that's perfect. Again this line is amazing and right where I want it to be. I did lose a little bit of length, but I'm okay with that because I am going to have some bias tape on the end of it anyway. Uh, so with this mock-up, I am happy enough to move on and create the final neck corset. I am going to be using a lot of the same materials as I did on my fan lace corset. So let's go ahead and start on construction. So once I have a pattern I'm happy with, I'll take that to the same fabrics that I used with the fan lace corset. A thick black cotton for the outer layer, a thin denim or canvas, whatever I had in the scraps for, and a thick backing layer. Once it's all cut out, I need to baste the back and the stiffening layers together with loose basting stitches, which will be removed whenever I feel like it, cause it's gonna be on the inside no one will see except the entire internet. Anyway. Next, I need to sew all of those side seams. In this step, I'm working on both the outer and the inner layers. I'll then take these to my tailor's hams and press each seam that I just made nice and flat. I'll sew in some boning channels to those seams with some bias tape over the center of the seam on the inside of the back panels. I'm just doing one channel per seam compared to the two with the fan lace corset. Once I have all of those done, I'll go ahead and attach the front pieces to the back at the center front and back of each half, leaving the top and the bottom open. With the halves turned right side out, I'll sew the last boning channels by just sewing a line with enough space to fit a bone into the very edge of the front and the back on each half. Finally, I will close the bottom of each half with a seam along the very edge. This is just so I can work on bones, which is the next step. As with the fan lace corset, I'll be using my spring steel boning, which I will trim to the right length and then hammer the caps on and seal it with some glue. I'll do this for each of those boning channels, which I believe was 10 in total. The next day, and once that glue had plenty of time to set, I will insert those bones back into the neck corset and then seal it all with some bias tape at the top and bottom edges. I'll then close the bias tape in the back by hand, making sure these stitches don't show through onto the front. And to finish construction, I will install the grommets for the lacing. Now I need to start the embroidery half of this project, which wasn't actually half and didn't take as long as I thought it would for a change. 
I'm starting this by drawing the design on with the gel pen so it won't rub off easily but will wash out easily later with just some water. I'm referencing the fan lace corset for this design but modifying it just a little bit to fit into some smaller panels. Please ignore all of the dog fur during this, it's a struggle having a husky mix. Once it's drawn out, I'll just jump right into embroidering the design. Each half only took me about three days to finish, and I did this all in about six days total, where I was sitting and working on this for about eight to ten hours straight and just binging a bunch of podcasts and shows. I really do enjoy embroidery projects, even though this can only loosely be called embroidery. I'm just sewing lines into this, but I love this kind of thing where it's tedious and I can just kind of zone out a little while crafting something. It's very relaxing and grounding for me. There were also some wonderfully stormy days during this that just helped make it such a cozy project while sitting on my couch. Once the long journey of embroidery is over, I'm still not done. I need to make and attach a privacy panel. This will not be boned and will not have the middle structure layer because I really don't need it here. Once I have that put together quickly, I will attach it by hand with the whip stitch off camera because I'm getting tired of this project at this point. I'm also going to attach some hooks and loops to the front and then it is done. I am so pleased with how much effort and work I put into this thing. I love that it matches with my corset so well. I love that it's just full of embroidery and things to look at no matter what angle I'm in. So proud of all of the embroidery I did. I think it took me like six days total to embroider and that's like with A plus hours of embroidery each day. And I, I just, I lived on my couch for a week. So I'm glad this is done. My hands are so sore. I'm happy uh, I can get a little bit of a break from that. This was a huge project. I didn't think it was gonna be this big uh, when I first started and it was. I am beyond happy. This thing is not comfortable at all. I am definitely not going to grab this for every date night possible. It takes a long time to get into it. And it's just, it's tied up here, it's loose down here. It's, there's some weird fit issues that I think I could have solved if I was using like a thicker material for my mock-ups, but that's neither here nor there. It's done, I'm not gonna touch it again. I think it looks so cute and it looks really good with the corset and everything. And it just, it ties it together really nice. So there are some fit issues uh, with this corset, namely, in the back. You can kind of see up here the lacing kind of goes out and, and then goes in and down. 
So that's because this is way too tight up here. I had to compensate with the lacing, which isn't the greatest. Kind of makes the panel bow in a weird way. So I think if I ever did make another one, I am definitely going to do mock-ups with this different material to be able to figure out the fit a lot easier. And a closure. I could have probably used a corset busk, like a mini corset busk up here, but I didn't think this bend right here and then going out, I, I didn't think that would be super comfortable. So what I ended up doing was um, bra hooks and then I made some loops out of just knotting thread over and over again. So that's what's holding this together, which is fine because I did not want a lot of tension on this. This, this is not supposed to be a tight garment. So it's not the greatest. I think I need to figure out some other closure mechanism, system, something. Because yeah, this, this isn't super comfortable and I ended up needing to put a privacy panel underneath that because it was pinching my skin uncomfortably. There's, there's quite a few things that I would like to change about this, but I am glad it is over. It was a lot of effort, but it's over and I have a ridiculous garment that I'm probably not going to wear a lot and that's fine. Um, so let me know what you thought about this in the comments. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!